Here we are conversing with Professor Rajiv Karandekar. He is the director of the Chennai Mathematical Institute. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, today we want to talk a little bit about block ciphers. The first thing I'd like to ask you, what are the block ciphers? Block cipher is a kind of an uh, uh, encryption algorithm commonly used uh, Along with stream cipher, these two are examples of what are called uh, symmetric key ciphers in which uh, both for encryption and decryption the same password is used. So if two people are communicating, they have to first share a password and after that they can communicate using this algorithm. So block cipher and stream cipher are two examples of symmetric key. The other one, not uh -huh. to be confused, is the public key encryption right. where, uh, or asymmetric key encryption where the encryption and decryption passwords are different, but that is a different story. Okay. Uh, so what are the standard algorithms here? So in block for block cipher, one of the standard algorithms in use till about 1999-2000 is what was called data encryption standards or DES. Right. And that was the standard. Now, uh, both encryption and decryption are dependent upon uh, how much computing power is available. So in the earlier era where uh, the computing power available for uh, people who are trying to attack was low, uh -huh. uh, something like data encryption standard was considered secure enough, but as the computing power was growing. As well as the number of computers. As well as the number of computers. So people realized that what was considered secure earlier, namely the DES was no longer that secure. And the search began for alternate algorithm. And, of course, just as for attackers have access to higher computing power, so do people who are encrypting. So the algorithm itself could be more complex than the DES. So this is the new advanced encryption standard. That's right. The advanced encryption standard or AES as it is called, uh -huh. in short. Uh, this that actually floated a competition for people to bid for their algorithm to be chosen as AES. I see. People could design algorithms and uh, submitted for this competition and one was of, there a prize? Uh, no, there were, as far as I know, there was no prize. But the recognition is the biggest prize here. Of course. But interestingly, one of the terms of the competition was that uh, everybody submitting the algorithm had to renounce all copyright and patent rights if their algorithm was chosen as AES. Okay, so there was no uh, possibility of making profit out of this. No. So. So what were the top ones that came in there? Yeah, so, so there, there were a large number of uh, submissions and they went through uh, one round, first round where they shortlisted a few and one more year and finalists, uh, the two, from what I know, of course, uh, Rindel, an algorithm called Rindel submitted uh -huh. by a team from Belgium uh -huh. uh, was the ultimate winner. Uh -huh. And the close second one was what was called uh, Serpent, a team from Israel. So how did they pick the winner? Roughly. Okay, so the uh, there were uh, various considerations from what I have read on the internet and talking to some of the author of uh, Serpent, uh -huh. Ali Biham. Uh, I had a conversation with him just about a year after this competition. I see. So, uh, one was the security aspect. Uh -huh. uh, how to judge security is itself difficult, but mm -hmm. okay, one is the security aspect. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. And then the other aspect was uh, the uh, computational speed required for actually encryption. Because uh, this was something which was to be used, widely used. For example, each time we use HTTPS for communicating with our bank or some other secure site, uh -huh. uh, unknown to us at the background, the computer at two end or the browsers at the two end are doing various things. Uh -huh. They check what algorithms are available at both ends uh -huh. and agree on a common algorithm for uh, symmetric key. So they when make, they say secure trans transmission, exactly what do they mean? Which point to which point is it secure? It is from the, uh, the in between the two computers, it is secure. Uh -huh. If somebody is uh, looking over your screen behind you, then of course it is not secure. Or right. you store it on your computer and someone else has access to the computer, again it is not secure. But between the two computers, it is secure. It's like sending a, uh, a letter in a sealed cover mm -hmm. fr from me to uh, you. Uh -huh. so, so what is ensured is that during the transition, once I from the time I have posted it till the time you receive it, 
or the address given for you receives uh-huh. it, it is secure. Okay. After it is delivered at the address, before coming to you, if somebody intercepts it, can't say. So it is from point to point or computer to computer secure. Okay. And they, in that process, they use both public key encryption and symmetric key encryption. I see. Symmetric key could be a block, one of these block ciphers or a stream cipher. Right. So how do we judge security between the various competitors like Serpent and Rindal? Okay, so uh, firstly, uh, you have to show, before we come to compare, we have to assure that a given algorithm is secure. Right. And that is judged by, of course, the, the a block cipher works on the following principle, that the message to be transmitted is first coded into a strings of zeros and one, as is commonly done for anything we do on the computer. Right. So it's a long binary string. It is broken up into blocks. I In see. this case, say 128-bit blocks or 256-bit blocks. Uh-huh. Imagine these blocks uh, put as bricks kept one after the other. Uh-huh. Each block is encrypted uh-huh. using this algorithm. So the block cipher algorithm is to encrypt one block uh-huh. uh, uh, of bits along with the pass, uh, password or the key which is commonly to be used. Mm-hmm. And it produces a block of the same length. That is the output block is what is transmitted. Right. So this is a mathematical transformation. And the first thing is that there should be no algebraic way of inverting this uh, this transformation. Okay. And uh, fairly complicated requirements are there because it's not just one block uh, encrypt, uh, uh, input and one block output, but there are several blocks input and several block outputs. Uh-huh. And uh, using several block outputs and something about the input, like it's a text in English language. Uh-huh. Just this information should not be enough to conclude right. that what was given. Okay. okay. So uh, there are elaborate mathematical uh, requirements that can be put on this. And uh, these are to be tested first algebraically. Uh-huh. There is no function which can be constructed which will simply invert this. Right. Okay. <laughs> Unknown to the key. Of course, given the key, there is a way of inverting. Because when you know the password, you should be able to recover the message quickly. Okay. So when I say sh- not possible to invert, it is without knowing the key. Okay. Okay. So that is one big aspect of algebraic security or mathematically n- not invertibility if you do not know the key. Right. The other interesting aspect is the statistical aspect. Okay. So it's let's say uh, if uh, the algorithm is such that the roughly the number of zeros uh-huh. in your uh, 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 message and the number of zeros in the encrypted thing is roughly same. Uh-huh. And likewise, number of ones here and number of ones there are roughly same. Then it's a uh, one could launch a statistical attack. I see. Because you can try one key after the other, one possible key after the other, uh-huh. and with each key you enc- decrypt a few blocks and check if the number of zeros and ones are equal or not. I see. And if you have chosen the wrong key, they are likely to be equal, and if you hit the right key, then there will be asymmetry because English language when decoded in ASCII. Uh-huh. Uh, once occur a lot more than zero. You write one page of English text and encode it using ASCII, you are likely to see a lot more ones than zero. I see. About 57% or 55% or 57% is ones. Uh, that's interesting. And that can be used if you are not careful, if your algorithm is leaking this information uh-huh. about is ones, uh, do ones dominate zeros. If I this see. information is leaked, then it can be used to launch an attack. I see. So any such... Uh, so any such symmetry or, or, or any such pattern in the plain text or in the message uh-huh. should not be passed on by the uh, uh, algorithm. Okay. So that is translated into that the output, uh-huh. if you have sufficiently long output, it should look like gibberish. It should be like output of a random bit stream. And one could construct then a test based on such requirements. So what was your research comparing Serpent and Rindal? Yeah, so comparing just this and a few more uh, other requirements, uh, uh, I have built a, 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 what may be called a test to see whether a, a given block cipher is secure or not. And uh, in that, of course, both of them passed that test very, very well, but uh, Serpent seems to be more secure than Rindel. Uh, as the experts also seem to have agreed at the time of uh, choosing the uh, AES candidate. Yet Reindal won the contest and Serpent didn't. Yes, because the security was one of the considerations. The other parameter was the ease of encryption, the com- 
computational complexity required for encryption. I see. That's very interesting. Thank you, Professor Karandikar.